Dan Coon Wake you up in the morning Dan Coon's wondering why you're snoring Dan Coon's show's fun, not boring It's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley I have great legs, as you can tell by that <clears throat> alternate opening credit to this program. Hi, how are you? It is uh, Thursday, 6th day of August 2020. I'm Dan Coons. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Thanks for starting your day with us. 68 degrees outside of our studios. Wind out of the west, northwest. Hovering somewhere between 15 to 17 miles an hour. It's going to be fairly windy today. But as you can see, it's, it's fairly clear out. Uh, and that 68 degree temperature is pretty mild. In fact, we got some good news weather-wise. They have canceled the fire weather watch. They had it posted. They said it was going to begin later on this afternoon, last end of this evening. They decided it's really not too necessary anymore. Still going to be blustery today as that cold front, a rather robust cold front, works its way into the Wenatchee Valley. Um, but it's only going to last for the day. It's going to usher in some cool air. Going to make Friday quite comfortable. Sunshine, mid-80s, light breeze. Nothing wrong with that. And then whew, we start heating up again. For the weekend forecast details are coming up. We got news coming your way. The Mariners finally snapped their four-game losing streak. They knocked off the uh, Los Angeles Angels last night, seven to six at T-Mobile Park. We got highlights for you. Everything else we're used to. And by popular demand, we're going to re-air the interview that we did last Friday with my friend and colleague Steve Hare, who is retiring from broadcast journalism anyway. Uh, and Steve came in and visited us, and we took a little walk down memory lane and talked about the future with Steve Hare, very uh, well-respected member of our community and a good friend of ours here at the NCB Live Channel. We aired that interview for the first time last Friday. We're going to air it for you again uh, today, uh, just because, well, we already miss Steve. If you missed that the first time around last Friday, you'll get a chance to get caught up with Mr. Hare in the back half of the program. A couple minutes after the hour, let's see what's going on out there. Good morning, Wenatchee Valley. As you can see, the sun is not quite bathing the foothills yet. We're losing about two minutes of daylight per day. We're well into August now. Sunrise this morning was at 546. Sunset tonight will be at 826, 14 hours and 40 minutes of daylight. So this is what we're going to start dealing with now as the sun is up, but it hasn't quite gotten the job done here in the Wenatchee Valley. And it's going to be like that now as we get closer and closer to autumn. I, I'm kind of looking forward to autumn, quite frankly. Good morning to the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera that's located adjacent to the cross, right at the very tip of Wenatchee Heights. That's why it's one of our favorite cameras, if not our most used camera. It's a nice tool to have. Camera two, I don't know, Megan decides, my Apple Annie's. And that gives you an idea, this is cash we're looking at, of course, it gives you an idea of maybe some of the wind that we're dealing with. As you know, these sky-fi towers, that's how they work. They have to be put up on ridges and mountaintops and things like that so they are exposed to the elements especially wind so you see that camera moving just a little bit and they're supposed to move they're supposed to have a little give in them if they were really ratcheted down it's really not good so it's moving around a little bit a little, little bit of wind uh, rolling down through the foothills of uh, the Wenatchee Valley and through Kashmir area making that wind blow a little bit so hi good morning Kashmir thanks for joining us camera number three we are off to see, I want to say, Union Valley, Megan. Yes, the Union Valley camera. So that's a gorgeous view there. Basically, when you look straight across the, the lake there, you can kind of make out the Bear Mountain Golf Course. You can make out uh, where US 97A dumps on to the main highway there, South, South Lake Shore Road. And I believe that is the moon in the top of your screen there, hanging around. You can, by the way, see Saturn with your naked eye, I'm told. I read that somewhere on the internet. Since I read it on the internet, you know it has to be true. You can't put false heads on the World Wide Web. Good morning to Kashmir. Camera number, uh, Kashmir, Shalane, I should say. Camera number four, there's Lake Wenatchee. My good friend Eric uh, Grandstrom and the fish magician Dave Graybill and some other cool folks. We're gonna go sockeye salmon fishing at Lake Wenatchee today, but they got blown out. They said it's just gonna be too darn windy. It's very exposed to the wind. Lake Wenatchee, I've spent a lot of time up there. Family used to have a cabin up there. Dirty Face Mountain looks spectacular, though. It looks bigger than normal. I think we zoomed that one in just a little bit. The Kaler Glen Golf Course, you can see portions of it at the bottom of your screen. You can see most of Lake Wenatchee. But if you're out there um, fishing for sockeye at the top of Lake Wenatchee, your, your boat's going to get rocked around a little bit. doesn't make fishing particularly fun. You can still do it. Don't get swamped or sunk. Good morning, 
Lake Wenatchee. And by the way, we'll give you a, an update when we get to the news on the uh, Chickaman Fire, which is burning not far from the Lake Wenatchee area. It hasn't really affected a great deal of people. It's burning in pretty thick timber in very remote areas, but they're making pretty good headway. Five minutes after the hour, one slide to show to you from the National Weather Service. That's your wind gusts today. They keep changing their mind. Uh, a couple of days ago, they said 35 to 40 miles an hour. Then yesterday, they said 30 to 35 miles an hour. Now they're back to 35 to 40 miles an hour. And again, these are gusts we're talking about, not sustained winds. So we're still dealing with the possibility if a fire gets going in dry grass or wheat, it can really get taken off, get going. But the fire weather watch, um, which was posted for yesterday, yeah, and they said it was going to happen today, they've canceled that. They've canceled the fire weather Watch, but we still have that strong cold front that's going to work its way into the valley as we work our way through the day. And these gusts will be at its peak, by the way, right around between, say, 5 to 7.30 tonight. It's fairly calm right now, but between 5 and 7.30 tonight, that's when the winds, the sustained winds and the wind gusts will be at its highest intensity. So, you know, get ready to get blown around just a little bit. Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling gives your home a hug. They also sponsor the weather forecast brought to us by the National Weather Service. Look at that high today, 82, a lot cooler than yesterday. We hit 95 on Wednesday. Our overnight low yesterday was 68, so a lot cooler as this cool air comes in. Uh, we'll have uh, fairly clear skies today. We'll call it partly cloudy skies. Again, breezy. This morning, winds about 15 to 20 miles an hour. Then later on this afternoon, it picks up sustained winds about 25 miles an hour. Gusts up near 35 to even 40 miles an hour late this afternoon, early evening for those areas that are susceptible to strong winds. So a lot cooler, good day to air out your house. Mother Nature's air conditioning is kicking in. 58 for the overnight low tonight, still breezy up until about midnight or 1 a.m. The winds will be dying down. That cold front flies out of here, heads into the Idaho Panhandle and off into western Montana. Uh, but it's going to usher in some cool air. Look at the high on Friday, only 84 degrees. Uh, with a nice light breeze. Friday looks just very pleasant indeed. You can go out and enjoy uh, the sunshine and the warm temperatures without worrying about getting too hot on Friday. It's an all-dayer. It looks good. It really does. Saturday, start the warming procedure as, a, as another ridge of high pressure begins to make its presence felt. So we'll go to 87 uh, with lots of sunshine on Saturday. Sunday to 91. We'll back to hot temperatures on Monday before we have a slight cool down on Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, the story today is going to be breezy conditions this morning, windy conditions this afternoon, right into the evening hours. It dies down overnight while you're sleeping. You'll wake up tomorrow with a little bit of residual wind, fairly cool temperatures. Overnight lows, as you see tonight, will be in the 50s, but then beautiful day Friday, not too bad Saturday, warmer on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Typical August weather for North Central Washington. That's your forecast, all right? Eight minutes after the hour, I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we have your Thursday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Live channel. Hi, my name is Manuel Navarro, Chief Operating Officer at Columbia Valley Community Health. Patient safety is our top priority, including providing care that just can't wait. With enhanced safety precautions, we want to ensure you that we're able to continue providing safe and efficient in-person care at our clinic. From in-car check-in, ongoing screening, immediate rooming, your family can get the safe care that they deserve here at Columbia Valley Community Health. Pipus Public Market's motto is where community meets. Whether it's people, you know, enjoying an event or they meet a colleague for coffee and whip out their laptop and are able to actually do work here, having quick and reliable Wi-Fi is one of the things that makes Pibus such a great community hub. It just contributes to the welcoming place that we want Pibus to be. I'm Allie and fiber keeps people connected and that's what Pibus Market is all about. Just about 10 minutes after the hour, fairly clear skies, 68 degrees, a little breezy right now. It's going to be quite windy this afternoon, much cooler than normal temperatures, highs will only be in the lower 80s, and then a very nice weekend is in store for us once we get there. Here are your headlines. Voters in North Central Washington rarely agreed with the rest of the state in Tuesday's primary election, but a noticeable exception to that was Chelan County's apparent support of Democratic Governor Jay Inslee, who had slightly more votes than Republican nominee 
Lauren Culp. But Culp, the police chief of Republic, easily outpolled Inslee in Okanagan, Douglas, and Grant counties. Chelan County also favored Attorney General Bob Ferguson, as did Okanagan County, while Douglas and Grant counties were two of only seven counties statewide where Republican nominee Matt Larkin received more votes than Ferguson. Eighth District Democratic Congresswoman Dr. Kim Schreier won every county in her district, but her Republican opponent in the general election, we don't know who that is going to be yet, former Amazon and Microsoft executive Jesse Jensen leads Seattle police officer Keith Swank by only 48 votes for a place in the general election ballot with a lot of ballots still yet to be counted. Swank was favored in both Chelan and Douglas counties. By the way, Schreier had her biggest support in King County. A Mansfield man is charged with rape after a woman allegedly escaped from a trailer where, she, where he handcuffed and sexually abused her. Riley J. Cox, 65 years old, accused of keeping the woman captive and raping her at gunpoint after offering to let her stay in an RV on the 20 acres he owns near the Columbia Bluffs. Douglas County Sheriff's deputies say the woman slipped away when he unchained her and drove with her to the Chelan Walmart on Saturday. Cock has a criminal history. In 2010, he was sentenced to 31 months in prison for illegally owning firearms. Deputies said when they investigated his property, they found 10 more illicit firearms. Prosecutors charged Kalk with first-degree rape, unlawful imprisonment, and unlawful possession of a firearm. He's held at the Okanagan County Jail. The Chelan County PUD had a virtual groundbreaking yesterday for its new headquarters out in Old Station. The PUD will be moving out of its downtown Wenatchee building into that new facility probably beginning in late 2022. Uh, this project exemplifies things that are really important to us. We start from the fact that uh, our primary job is to provide customer satisfaction. And this project, we believe, will do that in terms of being able to provide better customer service at lower cost than the way we currently operate. Uh, it, it also uh, fits our strategic plan because our strategic plan spoke to the need to have, take care of our long-term assets, uh, to create value for the long-term for our customers. And our buildings are part of our asset base. They represent about 16% of the value of the entire Chelan PUD. So what we have is the opportunity to create a long-term vision and now translate that into on-the-ground action to do this groundbreaking ceremony. It's going to allow us to create that long-term value through our assets that uh, help to keep rates low here in Chelan County and help to keep reliability high. item of business to get to and that's the update on the Chickaman Hill fire uh, the Chickaman Ridge fire I should say they have 143 personnel now have uh, slowed the spread of the 269 acre fire that's burning high on a ridge in the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest it's about 13 miles northeast of Lake Wenatchee they're battling steep terrain but the crews have been doing burnouts they're removing brush they're digging lines they're dropping water and they're trying to steer the blaze into the areas that were already burned in the 2015 Wolverine fire. The lightning caused fire broke out last Friday afternoon. Numerous roads and trails, by the way, in that area have been shut down during the firefighting effort, and they'll need more efforts today before the wind gets going. And that's a look at what's making news here on this Thursday morning. And with a look at some of the stories that we'll be working with uh, on the news tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Here's the anchor, Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, Jefferson Robbins sat down with Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett, and they talked about his interactions with former director of the Chelan Douglas Health District, Barry Kling, leading up to the lawsuit against Governor Jay Inslee. I'll have your windy and much cooler North Central Washington weather forecast, and Sports Director Eric Granstrom will be in to preview Game 3 of the Main Mariner Angels Series. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope you'll join us then. Dan? Thank you, Grant. You want to get a hold of us? We'd love to hear from you, our viewers. This is as much your station as it is ours. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. 
ncwlife.com. You can uh, go to our website, our homepage, ncwlife.com. There's a contact us icon at the top of the screen. If you click on that, a form pops up. You can either submit a news tip or just drop us a line. Or you can go to our Facebook page and drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. We'd love to hear from you. Going to take a break. When we come back, Sports the Mariners snap their four-game losing streak. We'll talk a little Seahawks football as well. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Join NCW Life Channel for another night at the races Saturday at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. We're bringing you live coverage of Les Schwab Night featuring Jerry's Auto Supply Pro Late Models, Mountain Dew Junior Late Models, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning Thunder Cars, the Plum Perfect Roadrunners, and the Bandoleros. Join us Saturday at 6 for all the action live on NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. Hi, my car's making a funny noise. Not a problem. We'll take care of you. Global Car Care's technicians are ASE master techs and well-versed in the more refined methods of vehicular diagnostics. Number three piston and rings have a slight loss of compression, down to 108 pounds. Your transmission is slipping. You're going to need a service. Looks like you're all set. These guys? They're good. Oh, and your spare is flat. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's top shop. Sparts on this Thursday morning, Kyle Seager hit his 200th career home run. Marco Gonzalez looked good, struck out seven over seven innings, and the Mariners, yeah, a seven to six victory, a nice one last night over the Angels at T-Mobile Park. Seager's shot came in the bottom of the third inning with two on and two out. Ryan Butcher was the left-hander on the mound. Seager's 71st career home run off of a left-handed pitcher. High drive right field, that baby's gone. Or do that. That thing is long gone. A three-run check by Kyle Seager. The Mariners have a 3-1 lead. He just continues to drive in runs. Career blast number 200 for Kyle Seager. Big time blast. I'm still a few behind them, so <laughs> yeah, I might have a little little way to go. I, you know, I, I appreciate the company, but I think uh, I still got a little while to go to, to catch those guys. But no, 200 is definitely something I'm very proud of. Um, you know, it, it's not something that, you know, I necessarily thought was, was going to be part of my game, you know, growing up or anything like that, or even when you break in. So uh, it's something I'm extremely proud of. Former Wenatchee Apple Sox, Marco Gonzalez got the win. Uh, he went seven innings. He allowed three runs on three solo home runs, but he also had seven strikeouts, and here they are. Marco Gonzalez on the mound for the Mariners. The Mariners need him to beat the stopper tonight. To work ahead and expand the zone. Took a little off of that, and it paid off. Strikeout, his first of the night, one down in the second. 2-2 two -two pitch, two out. Well, he took a lot off and it was working again for him. He's got two strikeouts. He goes one, two, three, six up, six down. 298, 35 homers, 148 runs batted in. Strike three caught and he didn't beef it. Um, not for the most part. Uh, I was making pitches and, and staying aggressive and I, I felt like, you know, again, this week had a good game plan and, and executed it. Um, but really, I mean, three mistakes um, and they capitalized and, uh, you know, I can I can live with solo homers, so I uh, tip my cap on those on those pitches. They they capitalize. I, I really want to stick to my strengths, and um, you know I think anytime a, a team faces me back to back, I think that they're probably going through more sequences in their head than I am. You know I have a lot of different weapons I can attack with, and so um, for me it, it's almost a, a I welcome that challenge to get more creative and and just keep attacking. And I thought um, you know Hudson did a great job last week. Nola did a great job tonight of calling a great game and um, sticking to our plan. I thought we prepared very, very well. So um, hats off to my two catchers as well. Dylan Moore went three for five at the plate, scored a couple of runs. Seattle scored three in the third. They scored a run in the fifth and three more runs in the seventh inning, and that proved to be the difference. Manager Scott Service is the crucial part of the night, starting pitching. And Marco was really, really good tonight. Uh, you know, obviously the Gave up the, the the three home runs, but they're solo shots, and I know he can he can survive those. But I thought he was really sharp, and you know after they got the, the two home runs there in the sixth to go back out in the seventh, uh, you know and shut them down there, put another zero up was was really big. So 
uh, you know, there's going to be nights when our, our bullpen's really good. It'd be nights when we struggle a little bit. And, uh, you know, Williams, that's really the first hiccup we've seen him have. Uh, he's been one of our sharper guys down there. But uh, we were able to, to hang on tonight. Nice offensive night, certainly, by a lot of guys. Um, you know, Dylan Moore continues to swing it well. Uh, Nola, some, some couple doubles. Kyle Lewis. But uh, Kyle Seeger's 200 homer. Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty awesome to see. I've seen a lot of them here. Don't know if I've seen one that far here. Uh, he really got all that one. I've seen him hit a few far ones on the road, but probably one of the farthest ones I've seen him hit in this ballpark. So. Mariners and Angels wrap up their three-game series. It's an afternoon game today. 110 first pitch. Tyron Walker takes on Dylan Bundy. All right, to the Les Schwab American League West scoreboard from last night. Let's take a look. See, Arizona bringing 14 men to the plate. They scored nine runs in the fourth, and the Diamondbacks beat the Astros 14-7. to seven. Austin Allen's two-run home run at the bottom of the seventh inning gave Oakland the lead. And they had a solo shot from Matt Olson in the eighth that provided the cushion. The A's beat the Rangers 6-4. to four. By the way, all of the Athletics' runs came on home runs. And Oakland's lead over Houston grows to a game and a half now. In the American League West, Seattle Leafs frogs both the Angels and the Rangers into third place. They're three and a half games back. Just days before the training camp began, of course, the Seahawks made a blockbuster trade. They got Jamal Adams... From the Jets, they had to give up two first-round draft picks in addition to Bradley McDougal, but they got him. Adams apparently was quite unhappy with his tenure with the New York Jets. As far as Pete Carroll is concerned, Adams is a major player, figures highly in the future of the Seahawks, but he wouldn't be in the Seahawks uniform if it wasn't for John Schneider. This is such an extraordinary deal that John figured out and his guys. Um, to not give him credit for this is, is to totally not understand what happened. This thing started months ago, and uh, when, when there was no time that you would think that this could ever be where this guy would be on our club and playing here at the VMAC, um, John had a, had, a, had a thought that it could happen, and he stayed with it, and he processed it. He worked at the highest levels of the communication of it to, to, to get it worked out. Uh, the, the background work that we did to answer your question and to, to, to understand the player, was it, was it worth uh, what we did to, to go get him? Um, would he fit into the club? Would he match up in our locker room? You know, could he get along with his coach? You know, could he support his head coach? Uh, there, was, there was all kinds of things we needed to figure out, and, and uh, I don't have the, I, I can't tell you I know exactly how it is because we haven't been in the locker room with him, but what, what I know what other players have said, I know what other coaches have said, I know what his college coaches have said. Um, we, we've tracked down some of the, you know, some of his real history to him, um, and we found nothing that, that that would give us any other thought that he's going to be a great teammate, and he's going to he's going to do everything he can to help his team win. Adams was characterized as a bad teammate and a problem child uh, with the Jets because of his off the field antics, but Coach Carroll says that's not going to be an issue here in Seattle. <laughs> One of the things you know you could look at, you could see him be all fiery and, and, and interpret that like, um, like he's being selfish or like he's being you know overly outgoing or whatever. Come on, you know this guy loves what he does and he cares so much that the passion just explodes out of him at times, which is exactly what you've seen in players that we've had in our program for years. So to have a chance to add that to our team, uh, forget all the playmaking stuff. It's that element of mentality that I'd love to add so that Bobby gets to play with a guy like that and that and Jay Reed gets to play with a guy like that and Bruce and they'll all feed off of each other because we all love to be that way. That's the way we love about this game is cutting it loose and, and letting it go and, and, and getting to that primal mentality that, that it, it, this game allows and, and uh, so I, again I don't know how it's going to be in the locker room but I do know what I know and what I know is I couldn't be more excited about and, and uh, um, Saying all that, it's still about being a great teammate. It's still about being a great teammate. That means that you're here to serve others. And so um, he, he's heard that, and he'll hear it again, and he'll hear it again and again and again. And I know he's, he, he'll, he'll be in total compliance with that. I'm not worried, I'm not worried for a second about that. But he, just, he, he needs to, to learn us and, and to know what we're talking about here. And, and I know he's really excited about it, and uh, so it ain't going to be any problem. His career stats are pretty darn impressive, 12 sacks, 6 Forced fumbles, 273 tackles, two interceptions, and a couple of Pro Bowl appearances in his three years with the Jets. And finally, let's jump ahead to our weekend broadcast schedule. It's Thursday. You know what that means. It's hockey night here on the NCAA Live channel. You can see the Wild take on the Salmon Arms Silverbacks from the Town Toyota Center from a game from October 
of last year. Our checker with the call. Tomorrow we got baseball Portland at Wenatchee from July of last year at 6.30. And then on Saturday, we got Eastmont at Wenatchee boys soccer from April of 2018 at 2 o'clock. And then we'll be live at Les Schwab night at the Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. We'll take to the air at 6 o'clock. Looking forward to it. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Thursday. And it's National Root Beer Float Day. One of those few concoctions that came because of an epiphany. Way back in 1893, Frank Wisner of Cripple Creek, Colorado was sitting in his cabin. He owned a bar. Sitting in his cabin and he's looking out over at this beautiful mountain and he sees the sun on the Snow Peaked Mountain and it reminded him of a big scoop of vanilla ice cream and his daughter's favorite drink was root beer. So the next day he went down to his bar, he grabbed a big scoop of vanilla ice cream, put it in a glass of root beer, took a shot at it and said, this is pretty good. This is really good. And it's been a, it was an immediate hit amongst the people of Cripple Creek, Colorado, and it's spread like wildfire ever since. I like a good root beer float. I think everybody does. There's something about the combination of the root beer and the vanilla ice cream that puts it all together. I guess generations love root beer floats. See if there's any local restaurants having specials on that today. Today in history, uh, Judge Crater, please call your answering service. Judge Crater, please call your answering service. This has been a running joke for public address announcers for years. 90 years ago today, August 6, 1930, New York State Supreme Court Justice Joseph Crater stepped into a taxi cab at West 45th Street in New York City, disappeared, was never seen again. Um, it's one of the most mysterious missing persons cases of the 20th century. It's like an early version of Jimmy Hoffa. They searched, they looked, they searched, they looked, and they did it for 40 years till they finally closed the case. And it became a running joke for many, many years. You know, you'd be walking through the, the mall and there'd be a recording or the airport. Judge Crater, please call your answering service. Judge Crater, please call your answering service. By the way, when he disappeared, his safety deposit box had been emptied out of about five grand. Draw your own conclusion. Judge Crater walked off the face of the earth never to be seen again 90 years ago today. And you're going to hear about this all day today. This is the 75th anniversary of the dropping of the A-bomb in Hiroshima, Japan. The atomic bomb little boy dropped by the United States, the B-29 and Ola Gay. We have some B-roll footage to show you. 70,000 people were killed instantly. They don't really know exactly how many people died in the subsequent years from burns and radiation poisoning. It was a lot. But 70,000 people dying within seconds of each other is uh, one of those sobering things that makes you just makes your jaw just drop. And perhaps the most stunning thing of all, Japan didn't surrender. They knew, hey, we got more than just the little boy. We got other atomic bombs, Japan, Imperial Japan. So why don't you just give it up after we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima? They refused to surrender. And so a few days later, we did it again to Nagasaki. The world changed permanently on this date 75 years ago today. Much happier notes. Birthdays. Lucille Ball. I love Lucy and she loves me. Uh, let's see. I Love Lucy. Really good show. Followed by The Lucy Show. Eh. Here's Lucy. And finally, Life with Lucy. Lucille Ball, television producer, actress, and of course, her Desilu Studios produced Mission Impossible, Star Trek. She was a media mogul, one of the only female, if not the only female media mogul during her time in the 1960s. Lucille Ball, born in the state in 1911, passed away of a aortic aneurysm at the age of 77 in 1989. But we remember Lucille Ball today. One of my favorite actors, Robert Mitchum. I just love the way this guy looks. He like, he don't care about nothing. Robert Mitchum. Uh, a lot of crime movies, a few westerns. Pretty good actor, too. Whenever Robert Mitchum pops over on my television screen, I always find out what he's doing. He died in 1997 at the age of 79. Born in this state 103 years ago. Don't you just love it? His face just looks like, what do you want? 29 minutes after the hour. Going to take a break. Mike Minot has got an opinion. And then another uh, airing of my conversation with Steve Hare, Wenatchee broadcasting legend. Coming up, you're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. In the heart of the Wenatchee Valley lies a unique Ford and Lincoln dealership. This is Pat Armstrong, Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime warranty. 
Pat Armstrong Ford's mission is to exceed your expectations by taking pride in making your car buying experience as comfortable and timely as possible. This mission is consistent in every department, including parts, service, and sales. We are Community Strong and Community Safe in East Wenatchee. This is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, now, no wonder women are angry, and no wonder they're speaking out. For far too long, we've ignored the fact that women have been abused and harassed at the hands of some men. And yes, maybe it's not you, but it's somebody. Official stats used to be that one in four women would be sexually assaulted to some degree by the time she graduated high school. But in reality, this statistic is far too conservative. But even accepting that it's 25% of women who suffer this abuse, isn't that conservative figure a justifiable explanation for why women are speaking out and demanding change? Of course it is. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Welcome back to Wake Up on Angie Valley. He survived polio as a kid, cancer as an adult, and a long and distinguished broadcasting journalistic career, despite having to work with idiots like me. <laughs> I'm talking about my good friend and my good colleague, Steve Hare, has returned to this program and to our television family for a brief little visit and uh, kind of a sad visit. Steve, I'll let, you, I'll let you take it for just a minute or two, if you don't mind. I'll tell you what, it's, 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 first of all, to get the call from Dan Coons to come in and, uh, and, and do the interview, I was, I was, you know, uh, comp it was a compliment, and I appreciate that. I, um, um, I've had a long and, and you might say either illustrious or notorious career in radio and, and a short little sojourn with television, uh, but it's been a rewarding career. And I'm here today to formally announce my intentions to file for extended unemployment benefits. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a euphemism for you're not going to be around much anymore around here, right? Oh, yeah, well, I'm stepping away from the microphone. Okay. Um, like I said, it, it, it's been a long career in, in, in news reporting and um, broadcasting and, and uh hosting a talk show at the, the radio station at KPQ for years. And along the way, those uh, 25 or so years that I've been in the Wenatchee area, I've met some wonderful people and uh, made some great friendships. And I'll tell you what, I've worked alongside some of the most professional broadcasters uh, that the Wenatchee Valley has produced. And uh, I, I'm proud of that. And also very appreciative to the people that I've worked for and worked with for putting up with my nonsense for the past 25 years. <laughs> and here we are sitting with masks on. And here we are having about. to do this interview with masks on. I know, this is ridiculous. It is, but you, hey, you've survived worse. As I, as I mentioned at the beginning of this interview, you had polio when you were a kid. Your, your family got you through that with the love and support of your parents and your siblings. And uh, you had a, 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 a bout with cancer, you got through that. Um, this is COVID nineteen is nothing to you. You can oh, breeze heck no. right through this stuff. Oh heck no! Yeah. But but as such, of course, I have some underlying conditions, and I'm I guess you would put me in that high risk category of people that are probably more uh, more prone to catching the virus. So I'll take every precaution that's necessary, um, and uh, so I have I have a lot of faith that we're going to get through this eventually. Uh, although it's my opinion probably that this virus will never be eradicated mm -hmm. much like other strains of flu virus it's it's going to be with us forever and i think it's a matter of not necessarily not being able to do the things you used to do but doing them in a different way um i i'm familiar with steve and lynette's story we got to mention lynette his lovely wife who's had to put up with this guy longer <laughs> than any of us have i know the story you came up to visit some friends uh, family of lynette's uh, you, you fell in love with the Wenatchee Valley. You got a job up here in radio. Eventually, you landed uh, where you and I landed together at KPQ, and that really um, made you a high-profile guy. Uh, you you brought with you for the uh, better and worse, I suppose. <laughs> uh, 
uh, a, 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 an intense professionalism. The, the, most, the two most important tools that any good journalist has to have is number one, you give a damn, and number two, you're curious about what's mm -hmm. going on, and that has served you well. Yeah. Well, I've always, I've always been inquisitive uh, and always uh, wanted to know what's what, what's happening, and, you know, um, it's, 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 it's always been uh, a part of my life. And uh, I, guess it's, I guess news reporting was just a natural extension of that. I've asked this question of, of some professional broadcasters that you know very well. I'm going to ask you the same question. I won't be surprised by the answer. For youngsters out there who are thinking of a career, would you recommend a career in journalism or broadcast journalism at this point in the year 2020 or not? Well, I'll tell you what, it's changed. Uh, it, uh, I think the, um, the ability to be a balanced reporter is probably more challenging now than ever before. And it's always been my belief in broadcasting that bias is unavoidable. We all come to the job with our own biases. But to try the best of our ability to get both sides in a way that, that, that is accurate and not uh, in favor of one side or the other, but allow the listener or the viewer to make their own decision. So um, that's always been my... Uh, my guiding principle, let's say, in, in, in broadcasting news. Um, and it's actually, for me anyway, uh, to retire from that position, it's really kind of freed me up mm -hmm. uh, to be able to share opinions on things that I had not before, which is probably much to the chagrin of a lot of people. <laughs> As, as, as those of you who follow me on Facebook probably are well aware, of, I do have my opinions, but I, uh, but I, you know, I respect others people's opinions. And you always have. That's always been one of your biggest strengths, I believe. You, uh, you sent me some photos. We want to toss them up, Steve. Uh. As, as we look at these photos, just tell me what memory. First of all, this is what you won the Jim Croce Lookalike Contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about that photo. Where's that at? And this was this was my second radio gig and uh, the name of the station was KVML and that was the voice of the mother load in Sonora California it was gold country in the, in California the year because uh, I can look at that uh, newspaper there in the foreground lower the lower mm -hmm. third there uh, that has 1984 so 84. That, was, that was the year and it was also the year that we had a devastating wildfire, which was my first real, you know, uh, introduction to reporting on a major wildfire. At that time, it was the Stanislaw National Forest Complex fire, which at that time was the largest in the country at 185,000 acres. So, uh, throughout, oh, six years later that my wife's parents moved to Wenatchee and we came up here to visit and uh, and fell in love with the area it was during the apple blossom festival time of the year and uh, Lynette and I just fell in love with it and thought it'd be a great place to raise our family and the rest is history but uh, again that was uh, my second radio gig uh, back when the hair was a little more curly <laughs> and the mustache a little more uh, Brushing. We have a couple more uh, photos of Steve there, much more contemporary. There's you at your old haunts at KPQ at the old KPQ Home and Garden, Home Show. And Garden Show. There you are. Yeah. <clears throat> Nonstop infomercial, wasn't it, man? When was the you first time, that. before we throw the final photo up, when was the first time that you realized that you were making an impact in the Wenatchee Valley, that people were paying attention to your newscast, they were returning your calls as a journalist? I think uh, it was in my... Uh, coverage of local politics and, and governmental affairs that I uh, first started getting some recognition uh, and people started really listening. Um, but for me, I think, uh, for better or worse, uh, the story that, that continues to haunt me today was the Wenatchee child sex abuse uh, trials Back and in investigations. The yep. mm -hmm. uh, difficult difficult uh, story to cover as one reporter and uh, to this day 
it's still it's still uh, with me and uh, you know still asking questions about what actually happened it touched a raw nerve and it brought emotions in people and those are two things that sometimes get in the way of actually telling the story absolutely absolutely yeah. of course there were strong feelings on both sides of that and, and I was uh, I was uh, probably uh, uh, a target of some of that you know vitriol that was going on at that time and yet here you are yeah one more, speaking of masks, one more photo. That's at our, uh, our old, our old <laughs> haunts there. This was, I believe, the September, we were just talking about this off the air, September of 2012, the Carlton Complex fires. And for those people who lived here. Still have that hat, by the way. Still have that hat? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for those people who lived here, if you remember correctly, over Labor Day weekend of 2012, we had a lightning strike in the foothills of town. It started a brush fire, and then we had a high pressure ridge. And for most of the month of September, you couldn't breathe in the no. Wenatchee Valley. We shut down the KVQ offices. The ventilation was all affected. And, and there I am uh, <laughs> doing my job with a mask on because we couldn't, you know, we couldn't stop what we were doing. No. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Finally, Steve, um, something <laughs> that you don't know about, but we do. When word got out that you were agreed to come on this program to talk about the next step in the career of, uh, of Steve Hare, our good friend, your colleague of mine, Eric Granstrom, was able to get a hold of some of the local Wenatchee celebrities, and they have put together uh, a little tribute oh, no. for you, Steve. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you to use the monitor here in the studio to watch this tribute video. For you folks at home, please use your TVs. Here it is. Happy retirement, Steve. I hope you have the best of times. Enjoy it. You deserve it. It'll be a, a sad day, an end of an era, to not know that Steve Hare is not going to be an event that happened in the Valley. But I'm sure there are many people that will attempt to live up to that level of skill and expertise that you had in delivering and writing those stories. Thank you for what you have done, and enjoy your retirement. One of my favorite memories is when I was brand new, very green, and landed at KPQ, and you were the seasoned journalist with years, decades of experience. Um, you were always really patient and gracious with me, even though I always wanted you to voice my ads because you have just such a great radio voice. Um, you would always very gently explain to me the line between um, the advertising side of the house and the news side of the house, which of course I knew, but I just uh, really wanted to see if I could get you to cave, and you never did. So um, congratulations and enjoy every moment of it. Steve, when I first heard the news that you were retiring, I first thought, now it's about time you hung it up, you fossil. But seriously, it's sad to hear it because it means the world and specifically the Wenatchee Valley will have one less true broadcast journalist, one with skill, professionalism, and the knowledge, and we are all the poorer for losing that. Personally, working with you all those years at that three-letter station was a joy, not only for your friendship and your good humor, but also because you were the foundation, you were the cornerstone that gave all of us the credibility that made it so successful, and we were all better because of you. I know that early on in my career, you always were such a great encouragement for me, and I really wanted to just say thank you for the encouragement that you gave me when I was working those late night Saturdays, early Sunday morning shifts, you know, the glamorous ones, the ones we all dream about at the local AM radio station, and uh, your encouragement always made me feel like I was a part of the team, and that my work uh, really contributed to the, to the overall sound of the station. Hi, Steve. Kay McKellar, a.k.a. Mama Kay. I have fond memories of our conversations as I shared information as a 911 dispatcher and fire information officer for you to share the news with the community. I wish you well as you step into retirement. Your reporting of the city issues when I was mayor was always uh, very open, very candid, and uh, you, your investigative research was outstanding. Again, uh, thank you for all of your years of service, and I really wish you uh, great enjoyment in your retirement years. 
Uh, can you believe it's been almost 20 years ago that we first met? 20 years ago that you taught me how to research, write, and report the news, and to do it impartially, something that seems to be very rare in this day and age. Thank you for all you've done. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed working with you, literally on and off over the past 20 years, and I wish you the best in your retirement, brother. Congratulations. Hi, Steve. This is Gene Sherritt. Just want to thank you for a brilliant career. So proud to have worked with you. When it came to covering the news in my former profession, uh, you were probably the most even-handed and objective person here in the Wenatchee Valley. Did a great job, whether it was crime, whether it was fires. Uh, you always did your job well, and you presented the news in a way that didn't have spin. When it came to times to have spin, in terms of opinion shows, you expressed it. You expressed it well, and you expressed it with dignity, and you never put anybody down. Always liked that, too. Last but not least, you taught me a lot about being a radio host. And I'm actually still putting it to use. So thanks so much. Enjoy retirement, and we'll see you out there. Hi, Steve Hare. I can't believe you're retiring. What are we going to do without you, for heaven's sakes? Anyway, you are an icon in your industry, and you are going to be missed. And please don't lose contact with all of us. We will miss you greatly. And I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Happy retirement. Congratulations, but buddy, you are going to be missed. You are far and away the best newsman I've ever worked with. You and I have got a long history, which I really appreciate. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate your integrity. I appreciate your honesty, and I wish you nothing but the best. And take it from somebody who is semi-retired himself, retirement's when life really starts. So love you, buddy. Congratulations. Hey, Steve. Sulem in the morning here. I'm just popping by quickly to wish you the best on your retirement and just want to say it's about freaking time. You're pushing 90, aren't you? Jeez, you should have done this 15 years ago for crying out loud. You've always been a pro and I know you'll be a pro in your retirement. Enjoy it and believe me, it's not overrated. You don't have to shave every day. It's kind of a cool deal. Anyway, Solem with hair. Signing off. Have a great retirement, Steve. See you, buddy. Steve, uh, congratulations on your retirement. Uh, it was always a pleasure to uh, talk to you on uh, KPQ. Uh, in the old days, during the campaigns, you were always gracious. Uh, you will love retirement. I beat you by almost three years, but uh, you and the wife will love it. Congratulations. Um, I remember you were one of the first people to interview me when I got the job as administrator for the Apple Blossom Festival and you were so excited for me and I think you probably have interviewed me more than anybody in Wenatchee um, at least a hundred times. So I appreciate you. You were so knowledgeable in every interview. You poured your heart and soul into anything and everything that you did when it came to the news and our community. And I just want you to know that I appreciate you. I want you to enjoy your retirement. You need to spend time with your wife and have fun and travel. Enjoy those grandbabies. And, and thank you for all you've done all these years. Bye, Steve. You always trusted people. You believed in people. But you always verified. And I think that took you a long way in building relationships that made you the success that you have been here in North Central Washington for a lot of years. And I just want to say thank you for everything you've done to add to our positive society here. Thank you. I just really enjoyed working with you for so many years there in the Wenatchee Valley and uh, you're just an outstanding broadcaster and an outstanding person. And you are definitely a friend of the law enforcement community and highly respected. I thought of a few words that would just identify you, I believe. Uh, and I know there are a lot of other words that also would that are good positive words. But these are friendly, honest, compassionate, competent, and professional. And Steve, like I said, you've done an outstanding job there uh, for the different stations you've worked for uh, while I was there. And uh, in representing uh, the station and also representing those you were working with and I uh, just wish you and Lynette the very best in health and happiness for your retirement. Take care.
Thank you for always being there, for being consistent, but also for having um, a very high degree of integrity, for always having journalistic style in mind, and always asking hard questions when you needed to. I appreciate appreciated that about you and appreciated um, everything that you brought to the table um, as a journalist. And uh, frankly, I'll miss not hearing you on air. So uh, stay in touch and have fun in whatever you're going to be doing in retirement. Best to you. Congratulations, Steve Hare, on retiring. And I just want to say to you, pal, that when you walk out that retirement door today, walk out with your head held high because you did it right. You served your community well. You did it with honesty, integrity, and class. And it was an honor to work with you all these years. And it's an honor, especially to me, to call you friend. So praying that the Lord will grant you a long and healthy retirement. God bless you, Steve. Steve here. Retirement? Seriously? I know you'll never retire. Your heart and your ears will always be listening, always be looking, always find those ways to report information accurately and honestly. I personally want to thank you for that, for the years where I would tune in and listen to what you had to say, because I trusted it. I knew your heart was here, and I knew you wanted to report as accurately as you could to give us the information on the good and the bad. In crisis, you were a strong and steady voice. We just wish you nothing but the best. Your reaction? Well, you know, um, first of all, folks, there's something to be said for smoke and mirrors. <laughs> uh, my success really is the success of KPQ is the success of, of all of my team members who worked with me at the radio station and here at NCW Life. Uh, I didn't do it alone, um, and I have so many people to thank. Sean Ballard, I, I see your face there, and thinking about the three times your ambulance crews had to come to my house and pick me up due to hip issues. Um, the, the, the government officials that I see uh, saying nice things about me, I, it, it, it really brings um, attention to how lucky we have it here in the Wenatchee Valley. Given the current affairs in cities across the country, including Portland, Seattle, and the leadership issues that they have there and I don't think you can debate that at this point but to know that we have uh, elected leadership here in the Wenatchee Valley that uh, that really is looking out for the best interests of all of us here to live here is really a, a testament to the wisdom of our voters here in the Wenatchee Valley and probably uh, really emphasizes the point that we are who represent us. And, uh, and, and, and in that vein, I think that we're very fortunate to live here in the Wenatchee Valley. So thank you so much for those kind words, folks. It was a pleasure working with you. I, and again, I, I, am broad, I am retiring from broadcasting, although I'm still available for part-time work if you want a spokesman for uh, visiting angels or reverse mortgages or <laughs> pre-lubricated <laughs> catheters. Steve Hare is available for you. <laughs> oh, uh, I want a, sp a special thanks to uh, Eric Granstrom who put that video together for you, Oh, Steve, Eric, that, that was wonderful. That 10-minute tribute. We have one more surprise for you, Steve, that you just saw that 10-minute tribute of all those people who, who care so much about you and your professionalism. We have a 20-minute video featuring all the people who never really cared much for you, Steve. And we don't have enough, much longer. Yeah, we don't have enough time to run that, and I apologize for that. Steve, I'm going to give you the last word as you uh, walk out your broadcasting uh, door and move on to the next great thing in, in your life, along with your lovely wife, uh, Lynette. I'll, I'll let you have uh, the final word, Steve. Well, first of all, I want to give a special thank you to my buddy here, Dan Koontz. 
who actually was one of the first guys I met when I moved oh, to the Wenatchee Valley. I forgot, you came to my record store. That's right. Yes. I walked into your record store and I was looking for something with uh, Dick Dale and the Deltones or something like that. I forgot what it was. But, uh, Good God, how old are you, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Dan, Dan uh, without Dan, I would not have been working at KPQ for the second and third time or here at NCW Life. He was the guy that drove the bus for me and, uh, and, and made it all possible. Don't be a stranger. Come by any time you want. You bet. I, I, I mean that sincerely, Steve. We'd love to don't, we'd come by and any time. Same for you, Dan. I want you to, to know that you're always welcome in my house, as is everyone here at, uh, and uh, everyone who actually spoke just now. But, uh, Dan, if you would, please, please call first. <laughs> And a friendly reminder, if you drop by Steve's house, Thumbelina will jump up on your lap. Yeah, we have a new addition. As you have a kitten, that's right, yeah, you yeah. do. Who will probably also jump up on your lap. Skippy. <laughs> Stephen uh, S. Mitchell here. God bless you, my friend. Anytime you want to come by and see us, and I'll be, I'll be in touch always. Thank you very much, Dan. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And for NCW Life News, I'm Steve Hare. What is it to be a volunteer firefighter? Is it the gear, the training, the vehicles you learn to drive, the honor of protecting your community? Time, energy, sweat, sometimes blood and even tears. Every call may not be a victory. Sometimes you'll walk away wondering if you helped at all. But sometimes you will be a hero. e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. Fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else. Get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle. Starting under $1,000, Green Motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family. Green Motion e-bikes is located right downtown on the corner of Palouse and Wenatchee Avenue. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30-point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. Back live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee. Let's go ahead and take a look at that weather forecast one more time. And once again, here your wind gust forecast for today. Again, this is gusts, not sustained winds, although it's going to be pretty windy wherever you are watching this television program at in our viewing area. Going to be quite breezy this afternoon as that rather robust cold front rolls into eastern Washington. It'll start here at the Wenatchee Valley, work its way to the east. It's not going to last very long. It's going to be in, it's going to be out, but while it's here, Get ready for some breezy conditions, and you can see gusts here in the Wenatchee Valley, especially in those gaps and maybe up in the Waterville Plateau, the Stamilta area. You can see gusts 35 to 40 miles an hour down here in the Wenatchee Valley, probably more like the lines of 35 to 40 miles an hour. It's possible. So it's going to be breezy this morning, windy this afternoon as the cold front comes in. We'll have some sunshine, though, but look at the high. Only 81 degrees or 82 degrees, I should say. Our forecast high, so that's a lot cooler than we had yesterday. We only had nine, we had 95 on a Wednesday, so big cool down coming our way. Well, I have no complaints with that. 58 for the overnight low tonight, still some residual winds overnight tonight. It will be dying down in the wee small hours of the morning, maybe a little bit of light wind when you get up Friday. Outside of that, with that cool air 
That's going to be coming in today. Friday looks about just perfect for outdoor activities. Sunshine, but not hot. Just warm and pleasant. High of 84 degrees. A little bit warmer on Saturday. Again, very little wind in the forecast with a high of 87. Then we start heating up a little bit. And by the time we get to Monday of next week, I think we can safely call it hot again. It is August after all. Everybody have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.